Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the United Stand. This is the latest Manchester United transfer news and it's a big morning. Lots of updates this morning to bring you. We'll be talking about left-backs, midfielders, strikers, but we will be talking about Frankie de Jong to start off with because there has been some big developments. We had the story on last night's show. It came in about 15 minutes in that there'd been a bid from Manchester United. This was coming in from Marca, a journalist who works for Marca in Spain. We were very dubious about that. We didn't actually believe that um, Marca would get the story on this and Manchester United have not put an official bid in. We can tell you that this morning. Manchester United have not put an official bid in for Frankie de Jong. However, it is getting closer and closer. The significant update, and I think this is maybe where this uh, marker have sort of jumped the gun a little bit. This is the big update. This is the big update. It seems that everything is heading towards the departure of Frankie de Jong from Barcelona. Xavi has accepted it, especially if the club can sign Bernardo Silva slash Lewandowski. Um, this is coming in from Spain again, a much better source than the marker one last night. And I think this is why people around Barcelona and in Spain are talking about bids coming in because basically Barcelona have accepted the transfer of Frankie de Jong. Now we're almost adding in another stage to a transfer here because we talk about the three stages of a transfer. You get deal agreed with the player, you get deal done with the with the selling club and then you get official announcement. I think we're adding in another one before all of that which is transfer agreed which is the decision by, and of course, it depends on the circumstance of the of the of the of the, of the player. Barcelona's circumstances are very unique that they're having to do this for financial reasons, and Frankie De Jong doesn't necessarily want to leave. But they have now got to that point where maybe a week or two ago we weren't at, where Xavi, the manager who has always wanted to keep Frankie De Jong, has now accepted this transfer. Therefore, Barcelona have always been pushing the transfer as a club. Xavi was reluctant. De Jong was reluctant. They've now got Xavi on board and the deal, the, not the deal, the transfer has been agreed, which opens the door to the bid. Now, Manchester United haven't put a bid in. They haven't put a bid in. And I'll tell you why they haven't put a bid in. Because they haven't put a bid in. They haven't put a bid in because Manchester United don't put a bid in until they know it's going to get accepted, which is why I was always dubious last night about this, um, this story about Manchester United putting a bid in for 60 million euros plus 20, because... I think that's too low. I don't think Barcelona will accept that. I'd love it if they did, but I don't think that they will. Therefore, Manchester United, if you know anything about the way we operate in transfer windows, and I'm sure many of you do, we won't put a bid in until we've spent four or five weeks finding out what bid will be accepted. We're not the sort of club that puts a bid in of, of 40 million for a 60 million player and starts playing hardball and stuff like that. That's why we negotiate and take so bloody long is because we will only put a bid in when we know it's going to be accepted. You think about Jadon Sancho, we never officially put a bid in until the one that was accepted. There was lots of talk about what would be accepted, add-ons, this, that and the other. But we won't put an official bid in until we know it's going to get accepted. Um, I rate the show highly, Mark, says Brad Thompson. Thank you very much for the super chat. Can you please call Darren Stedman a Pratt? Love from New Zealand. Thank you to Brad there. So if you are just tuning in, I'm going to whack that one back up on the screen for you because it's an important one. Manchester United have not put in a bid for Frankie de Jong yet officially, but the movement, the movement effectively is coming from this, what I'm about to put on the screen here, that Xavi has accepted the transfer of de Jong out of the club and therefore we are going to move closer towards a deal now. We've also got updates on Darwin Nunes for you, but I just want to bring you a few other source outlets coming in from Spain as well. This is uh, in relation to Frankie de Jong. Frankie de Jong is no longer a foot priority footballer in Barcelona's planning for the next course, and the possibility that it will be transferred is increasing. His departure is conditional on being able to sign a player in his position. That's from Mundo Deportivo. They also go on to say, in the case of de Jong being forced to leave, he would end up accepting that, but he would leave very upset by the club's decision. Little by little, he has been accepting that his situation at Barca Herona has changed, and he is waiting for the news. And then finally, on that outlet, de Jong Long's agent is scheduled to arrive in Barcelona in the next few days. At the moment, Barcelona have not received any firm proposal for the player, neither from Manchester United nor from any other club. So this fits in perfectly with what our update is this morning. There has been no official bid from Manchester United. Manchester United don't speculatively bid. They only bid when they know it's going to get accepted. We are in conversations with Barcelona. But what the big development here is, Barcelona have been talking to us for a while. De Jong has had conversations with Ten Hag, but Xavi's been very reluctant to let De Jong go. 
Xavi's now on board. That's what's happened in the last 24 hours. Xavi's now on board. He's agreed to the transfer and De Jong is going to have to accept it and therefore he's going to have to start discussing with Manchester United his terms. I've always said that I think De Jong is a deal that will take time but Barcelona accepting the De Jong transfer and what I mean by that is I think we've already already known for a while that the, the, the corporate structure at Barcelona, the CEO, everybody like that, they want to sell De Jong to generate funds, but Xavi and his coaches didn't. They now do. The exit door is wide open for De Jong and will, he will move out of it. Now, am I any more than 75% sure we'll sign him? Not really. I still think it might open the door for somebody else to come in and have a bid for him, but at the moment we are the only ones waiting at that door. And, and we're back where we were talking to last night. What Can Manchester United negotiate this deal efficiently? Um, that, that's a big question mark, isn't it? And uh, I do not have the answer to that. I think that we are we are in unknown territory with this club. They, they want to talk about being a new club, a new step forward, but can they achieve that? Uh, welcome to Members Club, Kane. Thank you very much for joining. And Tony Noble's been a member for two months. Thank you. Harland versus Nunez. Going to be a great battle, says Andrade. I, hope, I bet you're a Liverpool fan. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens with Frankie. I, look, remember that Manchester United need a positive story. Welcome to, yes, dog behaviour training. <laughs> Welcome to the Members Club. Thank you very much for joining. And uh, Joshua Bowater says, Today's international level crossing safety day. Mark, do you remember the three things you should do before crossing a railway line? I've not really crossed that many uh, railway lines, Joshua, to be honest with, but I would imagine you, you stop and look and listen. Yeah, and then stop and look again. Yeah, trains are quite fast. So, yeah, look, I think with, 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 with where we are, very unhappy with the, the Nunez thing, which I'll give you an update in, in a minute. In relation to De Jong, it, it is, I'm not going to lie, it is a good progression. When Barcelona are accepting his transfer, that's a stage closer to us getting a deal done. I think Xavi being on board is massive. And, and I think that's where people last night started talking about official bids prematurely because Xavi accepting De Jong leaving it was a big thing. Now that that's happened, it, it, it means Man United need to move. But I still do not think this deal is going to happen in the next week. I still think we're going to be a couple of weeks off. So we probably need to go back to not talking about De Jong for a few days after this update, because otherwise we're going to bore ourselves. But welcome to Members Club. What do you think about Sangari reported on Sky, uh, Sky says KMW? Well, we spoke about him yesterday. And Brecken, thank you very much for being a member for two months. We spoke about Sangari yesterday. I really like him. But the update last night was that we haven't, we're not actually a concrete interest in him at the moment. So in relation to Sangari, I would be um, a little bit um, uh, wary of that one at the moment. But one update I can give you that I hadn't heard from anywhere else. And this is why the United stands the place to be, because we go deep diving for information and it's not always sourced information sometimes you just get a dm from somebody and they say have you seen this and it's great um so Feyenoord have rejected an offer from leon for reported manchester united transfer target tyrell malasia who is a left back and uh, is a big 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 um target for eric ten Hag. he really likes him now the question is will we buy a full back this summer we don't know there's been talk of a right back and a left back uh, Brandon Williams is still part of the club. He's not got a move yet, uh, although Man United are trying to move him on, which would generate a bit of money and I think be good for him. Ter Tellez is still at the club. We're trying to move him on. But this is the left back that, that uh, Eric Ten Hag really likes. And it's interesting because it's coming in from Voitball International, which I've probably can pronounced completely incorrectly, but it is a Dutch, it's a major Dutch um, outlet. And uh, they reported yesterday that nobody seemed to pick up on or nobody cared to pick up on, that Feyenoord have rejected a bid from Lyon for uh, Malasia. Now, we know that Lyon are in advanced talks with Malasia and that United are almost, it's almost like a Tillerman situation. United are trying to get other deals done and remove people and then they'll go for Malasia. But what happened with Tillemans is he didn't want to wait, so he went to Leicester. This may well happen with Malasia, but their first bid has been rejected, so it's still a possibility for Manchester United. Um, going back to Sangaria. Hi, my name is Prince from Thailand, says uh, Bot. Thank you very much. And uh, just got a new dream job, says James, uh, through hard work and dedication. And you have been an inspiration with what you've done on this channel. Mark, you're a legend. Thank you, James. Well done on your job. And Just Me says, usual transfer shite. No deal will be done until August. Same old United dragging it on. Uh, Just Me, I wish you felt a little bit more positive, but I will guarantee you we will make a signing before August. 
I'm, I'm not going to say we're gonna, how many we're going to make, but we will make one before August uh, for certain. That's that's that, there's no doubt about that. Uh, it will happen. Um, yeah. So and on Sangari, nothing really to report on him at the moment. Stephen Spittle, welcome to the members club. Thank you very much for joining. If you are a member, don't forget to go to the community tab. We've got a new vote for you for tomorrow's exclusive members video, and it does involve Sangari. So get onto the community tab. Make sure you revote uh, your votes, and you'll get your exclusive video tomorrow, which will drop and it'll be chosen by you. So, yes. Sorry, Mark, just got here. What have I missed, says Charlie Griffiths. Well, I'll flash it up on the screen for you if you've just arrived. I mean, please do get here for 10 o'clock. But um, Barcelona have accepted that uh, De Jong will be leaving the club, and so is Xavi. That's the big story this morning. It's coming in from Spanish outlets, and uh, there is no official bid. Um, there, there was this story last night from Marco. We felt it was premature and a little bit sensationalist. What's happened is Barcelona have agreed to sell... Um, De Jong and what I mean by that is Xavi's now agreed he didn't really want it to happen therefore the door is wide open and United will put an official bid in they need to get on with it I don't expect it to take any time uh, happen anytime soon um, yeah so Malasia is the update as well now let's talk about Darwin Nunez for a moment I suppose the best update from Darwin uh, in relation to Darwin Nunez, and there are a few. This one comes in from Fabrizio Romano. Liverpool have not put an official bid in themselves yet. They are officially uh, preparing their official bid for Darwin Nunez uh, with 80 million euros plus add-ons. Uh, Manchester United still in contact with Darwin Nunez agents. The next crucial hours and days ahead, says Fabrizio Romano. And, and he's right. He's right on that. And I could have gone for a lot of different journalists. Mark Ogden of ESPN has said that... Um, this actually feels like Benfica might be pushing Liverpool's name out there to force a bid from Manchester United, which is probably why Liverpool and Manchester United have both put it out there that they don't want to get involved in a bidding war. So, look, I think we're ultimately going to lose the Darwin Nunez race, but there is still hope if you want to, to believe there is hope because everybody, and I mean everybody, is um, close to the club journalists, sources, Romano... Everybody accepts that Liverpool are in for Darwin Nunez, but everybody accepts that Manchester United are still in talks with his agent. So, and we have been in talks for over a month. So that's where we are. I believe it will be over in the next few hours. Uh, I don't think it will go to tomorrow. Liverpool are very efficient in the transfer market. They won't mess about. They'll obviously been told this is the price. They'll obviously been told by the player he wants to come. And I expect them to get that deal over the line. And we can talk and talk as much as we like. But I think from this point... We're probably going to have to accept defeat that we've been outdone by Liverpool. I mean, the only way we're going to turn this round is by probably getting into a bidding war. And I don't think that will actually please a lot of our fans because I don't think it's... I don't think... I might be reading the wrong the room completely wrong here. I don't think it's the fact that Liverpool are going to get Darwin Nunez that annoys people. I think it's the fact that we've spent so long talking on about Eric... Ter, talking to this player who is Eric Ten Hag's priority and we've messed it up. To go and offer 90 million now would just be embarrassing. And we've made that mistake before. We've done it with Harry Maguire. We've done it with Alexi Sanchez. You can't save face by chucking stupid money at the, at, at the mistake. But the problem is, we've been talking to this guy and his agent for a long time. And we should have got this done way before Liverpool came in. And I think that's what frustrates people. Dave Stan, welcome to the Members Club. I hope you're all doing very well this morning. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, it doesn't matter how much Nunez is United are not getting him, says Katie. I, I don't think we're getting him now. I did obviously vent a bit on the 8 o'clock show last night, but I said a night's rest would, would probably help us all. I wake up this morning and I'm like, look, we failed. Accept the failure and move on. It, it's not great, but Darwin Nunez is not going to be the next Cristiano Ronaldo and he's not going to be the next Lionel Messi. Darwin Nunez potentially could be the next, I don't know... Um, the next, I don't, I don't, you know, he could be the next Latan, but ultimately there are, there are plenty of players that could be the next Latan, and that's what you've got to find. He's not going to be the only decent striker, is he? Uh, shout out to Joshua Bowwater in the chat. He's just gifted five United Stand memberships. Legend of the chat this morning, Joshua. Thank you very much. Welcome to Members Club, Paul Drogba. Please remember, if you are a member, go to the community tab because there's a vote for you to vote on the exclusive video you want to come out tomorrow. So do check that out. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. Thank you to Joshua there. Ronald says, former club manager Louis van Hal has been reported as saying Frankie de Jong is worth 112 million. Is that being helpful to anyone or just a pipe dream, says Ronald? I, I wasn't going to mention it, Ronald, because I do believe that uh, Louis van Hal just cannot get over the fact that we sacked him. And some people don't agree with him being sacked, by the way, but he was sacked. It sounds ridiculous that we sacked an FA Cup winning manager the next day after winning the FA Cup, but that's how high our standards were then. 
Um, Louis van Gaal's always been quite bitter towards Manchester United. We've heard of what he said about Timber, that really suggesting that he should stay at Ajax. He was asked about Frankie de Jong last night, and he said that's why he's a hundred and fifty million pound player. I mean, what, 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 what is he talking about if he's not being bitter towards Manchester United? They didn't pay a hundred and fifteen million pounds for him, Louis. They paid sixty five million. So what? Why are you doubling his price? Because you're just trying to make it difficult for United, aren't you? It's so, so bitter. Just you know, get on with your life. Get on with your life. You're the Dutch manager. You've got a great record. Stop. Eric Ten Hag is a fellow countryman. Why are you making his job difficult? What a nonsense statement to come out with. That's why he's a £115 million midfielder. He's not a £115 million midfielder. Barcelona wants 70 for him. What, what, what are you even bloody talking about? It's just, it's just, It just comes across as ridiculously bitter. Good morning, Mark. Can't see us getting Nunez in. Who do you think the other targets would be, says Jamie? Well, I'm just about to talk about that. Frederick, thank you very much for the super sticker. Thank you very, very, very much. Um, Harrison says you forgot if we hurried up with the deal Liverpool would panic and still try and hijack I think you're forgetting that well no I, I don't think you, I, don't, I don't think that's how Liverpool work mate I don't, I don't think that's how Liverpool work if I'm, if I'm honest I think if United had tied this down deal down a couple of weeks ago I don't think Liverpool would have panicked and gone for it so I don't but look we'll never know that the reality is we spent a long time talking the, 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 if, if you want my Opinion on who I think our, our next option will be when we don't get Darwin Nunez. Um, it's Richarlison. If you want what I've been told we're going to go for if we don't get Darwin Nunez, it's Richarlison. I think we all hope it's going to be um, Nkunku. But I spoke to a, a German journalist um, a couple of weeks ago. Was it Pletty Goal? I think he, he, I think he tweeted it as well. And he was talking about 90%. 95%, 99% that, that Nkunku will stay at Leipzig. So things can change, but Nkunku's a harder deal to do than Nunez. So we've messed up the Nunez deal and we're, and people think we're going to go and do the Nkunku deal. If we try and get Nkunku and Leipzig decide to sell, they'll ring PSG up and PSG will go, go in there. So I think Nkunku's a more difficult deal. Richarlison is where I think we'll end up going. Uh, as I've said, I don't want Richarlison, but I think that's where we're going to end up going. Mark, can you say hi to my stepson, Elliot? Says Dan. Hi to Elliot. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Brecken says you're so inspirational, Mark. Says Brecken. I don't know about that, mate, but if, you know, I'll take what I can get. And we don't need one season um, in Kunku, says Nino. And uh, United all the way says De Jong for 70 million, Sangari for 35 million, Timber for 35 million, and Charlie Austin on a free. I don't know whether you mean Charlie Austin or Lacazette when you say that, though, United all the way. And Phil Jones' new contract would be a 10 out of 10 summer. There we go. A bit, bit, bit of comedy in a morning show is all, always a good thing. Um, Vardial from Leipzig is staying, Roche, apparently. Uh, Vardial is staying. Bastoni is staying. Those uh, updates came out last night. Uh, somebody else who's staying as well. Um, just, a, just another update. Manchester United have made it pretty clear they have no intention of selling Marcus Rashford. That's from Simon Stone. That will be well sourced. Simon Stone is a BBC journalist and uh, obviously has very close connections to the club. I, I said I said this to you. When was it? The Manchester derby? Was it the Manchester derby when Rashford and Lingard came on and played absolutely terrible? And then the next day there was a leak from Rashford's side that he, he, his phone wouldn't stop ringing for clubs trying to buy him. I said it at the time. That's just angling for a new contract and to start games for United. He, he ain't going to leave United. He's, I, mean, have you, I mean, have you seen how many followers he's got and, and how, how popular he is off the pitch? That's because of Manchester United, a lot of it. Of course, look, no one's going to take away the amazing work he's done and the, the awards he's got. And we're talking about uh, food poverty and, and, and really serious issues here. But if he was a player for Everton, he wouldn't get anywhere near the exposure he gets at United. And Rashford, whilst I hope he's still going to be a top-level footballer, he's also a top-level brand. And you don't take your brand away from Manchester United. So Rashford's never had any any intention of leaving. I, I would always call I would have almost called his bluff if I was United. I would have said if you want to go, put a transfer request in and he won't do it. It's just it's just it's just PR. He's got absolutely no intention of leaving this club. None whatsoever. And United don't have any intention of selling him either. And maybe that's a failure on United's part. You know, I want Rashford to stay. I've always been a fan of Rashford. I want him to look in the mirror and start being a footballer. That's what I want. I still think we can get something out of him. But it, but similarly to what's happened with people like Bruno and Maguire and Pogba, I accept that some parts of our fan base would love to sell him. 
The club need to look at it in a footballing way and go, is he delivering as a footballer? And the, question, the answer to that question is no. So why are you adamantly keeping him and why are you trying to renegotiate a new contract with him? Because all you're exposing yourself as, as again, is a brand and not a football club. Because a football club would not be negotiating a new contract with Marcus Rashford. A brand would that's interested in commercial deals. And that's where United will probably never change. They can talk about we want to be successful on the pitch, but they're never going to stop putting out winning team photos and all the other shit that's been happening over the last 10 years. They'll never stop doing that. And um, I think negotiating a contract with Marcus Rashford represents a really bad message at a time when we're meant to be cha uh, tra changing the football club. Um, but we'll see. Um, if anybody didn't see this last night, I'm just going to whack it up on the screen. So this came in from Mark. Manchester United have offered Barcelona 60 million fixed plus 20 million variables. That's not true. That came out last night. That's not true. This is the truth. Manchester United have not put an official bin in yet. However, um, Xavi has accepted that the deal needs to be done alongside the Barcelona board who've wanted it to be done for a time and also Mundo Deportivo with a good update as well that De Jong's agent will fly into Barcelona in the next few days at the moment Barcelona have not received a firm proposal for the player which is where we are basically at at the moment with regards to that situation so I mean look lots lots to digest this morning and uh, Shane says, I think we never get the Nunez deal over the line is because he was waiting on Liverpool to come in with an offer. So Shane, uh, Paul, welcome to the members club. Whatever the truth with Darwin Nunez, it's, it's, it's an embarrassment for Manchester United. And um, I just think that I go back to what I said yesterday. I've got no problem with, with, with persuading a player. I think the prime... Welcome to Members Club, Gabriel. Thank you very much. I think the prime example of this, and I always use it, is that Roy Keane on the Friday night had agreed to go to Blackburn Rovers. He'd spoken to Kenny Dalglish. He was the manager. Kenny Dalglish went away on a weekend golfing holiday. When he came back, Roy Keane was holding up a Man United shirt because over the weekend, Sir Alex had been in and swooped in and persuaded him to come to us. You can persuade somebody to do that. And maybe Liverpool have done that with Darwin Nunez and maybe we're the Blackburn. But what I don't understand... And what concerns me a little bit about Manchester United is that when you're involved in transfers, you have got to be ruthless and you've got to be aggressive. But what you've also got to be is clever. Why would you be negotiating with a player if they're not committed to coming to your football club? Rangnick mentioned it plenty of times and it really resonated with us, the fans. Manchester United need to sign players who are hungry ready to take the step up and want to come to this football club. Three things, hunger, ready, desire. Nunez is hungry. Has he got the desire to come to this football club? If he hasn't, that's a, that's a big no. Frankie de Jong, how much persuasion is actually going on here? Because if he's coming, kicking, kicking and screaming, look at what had, happened with Di Maria. I think de Jong will come and give everything to this football club. I, I really do think that we will get him. But it, I am a little bit worried that United seem to be working on deals that are just very naive. Like, we should be, we, before we put the work in, we should be getting a big thumbs up from the player that they're desperate to come to our club. Now, I know that's not always easy, but that's why we should be looking at people like uh, Sangari, because he will be desperate to come to P Manchester United from PSV. I think there's pictures of him in a United top as well. Those sort of signings are way more valuable than a player that may be better that doesn't really want to come here. And I just worry a little bit about our summer transfer window that are we targeting the right players or are we trying to persuade players? And and that's a, there's a big thing there. Anton, welcome to the Members Club. Great being a part of the United Stand, says Mark. Already loving the perks. No worries, Mark. Make sure you vote for tomorrow's video. Uh, Julian says, the club has sucked all excitement out of this transfer window even before it began. It's the hope that kills you, Mark. All the Glazers do is build up our threshold for incompetency year after year. And uh, Shaq, welcome to Members Club. Look, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to uh, pretend that I'm really frustrated or angry this morning. I'm not. Uh, last night I was. Uh, this morning I'm not. I, I feel that um, this morning that we've just got to look. Absolutely no issue at all with being disappointed by the Darwin Nunez thing. I'm not. I want, I've got to be honest. I'm not massively disappointed about not getting Darwin Nunez. There is always plenty more fish in the sea. I don't think he's the dream he was going to make us win the title in the next three years signing. I think Frankie de Jong's more about that. But what 
what does frustrate me is that Liverpool have beaten us, that we spent weeks working on the deal, and that it's Eric Ten Hag's first summer, and that's his number one priority attacker, and we failed. That's what bothered me. I don't blame Ten Hag. I don't blame Darwin Nunez. I don't, I, I, and I don't blame fans for not being bothered or, or being bothered. But what I do blame is the club again. They're on trial this summer. They're the, they're the ones who are negotiating these deals and who have consistently failed. We've all got we've all got our deals that, that that we look back on and we get pissed off about. The one that pisses me off, and it's probably not one that pisses you off, Perisic. Perisic was it five years ago? I think it was five years ago. I think it was the summer after it was Mourinho's second summer. Perisic, forty five million. Inter were ready to sell. United wouldn't pay more than forty, and we walked away. I think Perisic at that point would have been a revelation, especially in a Mourinho side, because. He would have been one of Mourinho's favourites. He can play either wing. He can put a cross in. Tremendous work rate. United walked away from that deal because they didn't want to pay enough money. And and that was a disgrace because Mourinho had just won a Europa League. He just got us back into the Champions League. And United said no. That's what worries me about United. It's not the manager. It's not even the players. It's not the fans. It's the vision that all those people have collectively compared to the board. They're on a different page sometimes. They'll be like, well, we're not overpaying. There's probably a scenario where Barcelona say we're not selling Frankie de Jong for any less than 70. And United say, well, we're not paying any more than 65. And United walk away. There is a scenario where United probably do that. How does that help me? How does that help you? And how does it help Eric Ten Hag? That for five million quid, you're not going to get the player that he really, really wants. Well, we've got principles and dividends to play. Swivel on them. And that's what worries me about United. They may not do it. They may not do that. They may not behave like that. I'll come back with a positive and say there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that we will make positive signings this summer. We will have a roller coaster. We'll have the low points of missing out on Darwin Nunez to Liverpool. I think we'll hit a high of getting Frankie de Jong. I don't know whether we'll have a low point of Timber refusing to come. I don't know. But we'll have ups and downs. It's not going to be the summer that some people think it's going to be where it's going to be a complete and utter joke like it was under David Moyes when he was at Manchester United. But... I don't think it's going to be the perfect summer either. I, we, we will not have a 10 out of 10 summer. And a 10 out of 10 summer for me, and I don't know what it is for you, let us know in the chat. A 10 out of 10 summer for me would be selling 12 players. And people say, well, how, how are you going to do that? Well, we know that Pogba, Lingard, Matic, Cavani and Mata are gone. So that's five straight away. Brandon Williams, Twan Sebi, Jones, Pereira, Henderson, Wambasaka, have I said Bayi? You know, easily get to 12. Martial, easily 12 people need to go out the door. Five need to come in. And I would like that to be Timber, Frankie de Jong, somebody like an Nkunku or Darwin Nunez, another midfielder like a Sangari, and then a fullback. And I'd be very happy with that. I mean, I'd love us to go for Anthony. I like Anthony. I don't know whether Anthony can come back into the equation now that... Do you need to go... If you don't get Darwin Nunez, do you go and get Anthony? I mean, there's there's a theory for you. Do you... Do, 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 the one, the one problem that Manchester United have got in that squad, in the front three, is that we've got an abundance, and, and, and Darwin Nunez would have been the same. Darwin Nunez is a striker, but he, he can play off the left as an inverted right footer. Where Rashford can do that, Sancho can do that, Alanga can do that. We've got nobody who's an inverted or naturally left-footed player who can play on the right. Anthony would do that. And all right, you've still not got a player who can play if Ronaldo gets injured, but you could do different things you could play you could play Rashford through the middle for one season I think it would be okay um, maybe Anthony would be a good idea maybe we change our ideas maybe because we're crying out for a left-footed winger by the way we need a left-footed winger and Anthony's brilliant at inverted crosses towards um, well it's been Haller and it could be Ronaldo so so maybe we do look at something like that Mark Jovic on loan with buy option plus Anthony I mean that that's a good idea as well Sean I mean as like if Missing out on Darwin Nunez is disappointing and it needs calling out because the club failed. But Eric Ten Hag can adapt and Man United can adapt. And sometimes you adapt, you don't get your first choice and you end up getting something better. Let's not pretend that missing out on Darwin Nunez is the end of United's summer. That there are other options out there and it's what we do. And I really would like United to go for Anthony. I, I was sort of like, if you get Darwin Nunez you're not going to get Anthony as well. But if we're not getting Darwin Nunez and we're not getting Nkunku and we're looking at Richarlison, I'm thinking maybe we go for Anthony and we, we try and mix it up a little bit. Let's see. Let's wait and see. But look, summary. 
Malasia rejected Leon bid by Feyenoord. That's the left back. He's still available. Darwin Nunez, we're still in talks, but I think it's inevitable that Liverpool will get that deal done. Frankie de Jong, no official bid has gone in, but Barcelona have accepted that the, the transfer of de Jong. What I mean by that is Barcelona have been talking to United for weeks, but Xavi has now accepted that de Jong needs to be sold, which is a huge step forward, which is why people think bids have gone in. They've not gone in yet. Man United will only bid when they know the bid will be accepted. We're not the sort of club that will offer 60 million for it to be rejected to have to go back. We'll put a bid in when we know Barcelona will accept it. I think we'll get to that point. I'm not expecting it in the next few days. We may need to stop talking about De Jong for a bit because we'll probably get bored. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's a few other things I want to talk about at two o'clock. There's some, some more transfer stories that I just need to iron out a little bit. Um, one of them's to do with Trazard. We'll talk about that at two o'clock. But yeah, the big updates are we continue talks with Darwin Nunez, De Jong, Xavi has accepted he can go and of course his agent will be flying in to sort out the leaving from Barcelona in the next few days um, which I've just put up on the screen for you there um, yeah that's where we're at th this morning um, make sure if you remember you go onto the community tab after here and vote for the video that you want to be your exclusive members video which will go up tomorrow please do thanks to everyone who's become a, a, a member today by the way big shout out to Joshua Bywater who gifted five of them as well um, we're only 50 subscribers away from 354,000. So if you've not subscribed to the channel, it's free to do it. Bottom right hand corner, click it, subscribe and make sure you click the bell, which is the notifications and tick to get all notifications. We could go live at any time in the next month because I think that we will get bids and officials and deals done and information coming in and we'll go live. This is the place to be. It's the best Manchester United community. In fact, it's not just the best Man United community. It's the best football community on YouTube, let's be honest. A bit, the best and the biggest. Do you know how much Liverpool bid, bidded for Nunez, says Jack? Apparently it's going to be 80 million euros plus add-ons, which is a lot of money. A lot of money. Anyway, we're back at 2 o'clock. 8 o'clock show tonight as well. We'll be back at 2 o'clock with all the latest transfer stuff. A couple of transfers. I'm just digging deep to find out. But um, really pleased with that Malasia story, actually. No one, no one had been talking about that. So Leon have had a bid rejected, which means the door is still open to... United for that left back. Let's wait and see. I want to see United start pushing for Anthony. I don't know whether they will. I want to see us going for Sangari. I don't know whether they will, but I think there's a couple of signings there that are really interesting. I'd be happy with a summer transfer window of De Jong, Timber, Anthony and Malasia and Sangari. What a summer that would be. De Jong, Sangari, that solves your midfield issue. Timber as a defender, Malasia as a left back and Anthony. I'd be happy with that. I'd be really happy with that. And if you want to maybe bring Ericsson in as well. Thanks everyone for watching. Chunky loves the community. We all love the community. Have a great day, everybody. I'll speak to you at two o'clock. Take care. And uh, let's see if we can get some positivity in the next few hours. Let's, I just, I want Darwin Nunez to just sign for Liverpool so we can just get it out of the way and move on. Um, but apparently we're still in talks. Let's wait and see what happens.